Okay, welcome back to part three, and this will be the last part of the lecture on process uh, for the junior seminar. And so in this last section, we're mostly just looking at contemporary artists who are very much focused on process. And I picked Karsten Holler, who does these kind of installations, um, because he is very much involved in, um, I mean, I think his, his actual conceptual process is also pretty open process focused. But also, I like how his installations involve a lot of um, interactions between the the viewing public and the art. So, like you know, building in a slide that goes here, a slide that goes from between the stories of an art museum, um, or also how like his installations will involve a set process. Like in this case, in this in this particular installation, it included this uh, pen that had reindeer, and then the reindeer ate a certain mushroom that was there um, as part of their feed. And then in that feed, that meant that their urine produced a psychedelic drug, uh, which I don't know if anyone ever got to ingest the psychedelic drug. Apparently in Lapland, um, that was a thing, but he decided to make that into an installation. Um, here's Phil Collins, not the Phil Collins you know, but a different Phil Collins who does these kind of installations um, where they're uh, very much kind of um, participation based. He sets up these karaoke, um, these karaoke um, on-site karaoke booths where people can just wander in and sing. And then he um, he records all the videos, and then those become video installations in museums. Uh, there was a pretty famous one he did where he made these two kind of um, installations that were very much exactly the same. Um, one in uh, in uh, Israel and one in Palestine, and so and they were running at the same time and at the exact same time, young people in Palestine were you know participating in the karaoke and young people in Israel, and then when it was shown, you got to see the two simultaneously. Um, there are some graphic designers that I think of who embrace more of an open process than others. And I would certainly feel like David Carson is probably a good example of that, um, where uh, he really much kind of fought the kind of like the, uh, what he saw as like the oppressiveness of, of grid organization and the oppressiveness of valuing cleanliness and clean communication over everything else. Uh, he's known for the phrase, don't mistake legibility for communication. And Meaning that sometimes the lack of legibility or the difficulty at reading something, the difficulty at figuring something out is itself a form of communication. Um, and so his um, his design work tends to be more open process in that there's more experimentation in trying to figure out this kind of balance between the, the type of uh, communication he's aiming for. But I also thought of um, this architecture firm. This is a um, this is a pavilion in uh, Maryland, and it's wooded and it's um, it's just an amazing piece. And the approach they took is is very very kind of open processed in their design and how they um, interacted with the public before the design was made. And then the end result is this very kind of like outside the box product where it's uh, it became a a piece that's like this very kind of um, a uh, pretty substantial structure, but because of the materials it's made out of and the way it's designed, it almost disappears in the landscape from certain points of view. It's a pretty, pretty amazing piece. And here also, I'm returning to man versus machine, which I covered in the process and concept uh, lecture for designers. And I think of them also as being a design firm that very much takes kind of a, as you know, as close to an open process approach um, as you might, um, as a as a design firm could. And this is the last piece. This is a studio artist, um, but I think it's a really good example. And I, I actually like ending on this one because I feel like this is, of all the examples I have for this lecture, this is the closest to where um, where our individual students are. Right. This is only to me. This is a, a piece that someone just just a year graduated from graduate school could possibly make, or an artist. Um, even just a couple of years graduated from a BFA program, maybe. But I think it was a very beautiful, exciting piece. There was um, a psychiatric ward 
hospital that was being torn down, I believe in Boston. And um, Anna Shulai, um made a proposal for an installation in the space and she won. Um, and basically what she did was she just filled the entire space, all the floor spaces of this building with potted flowers. And, um, and then just with these little tiny weaving paths that allowed you to go through some of the spaces from room to room and occasionally from hallway to hallway. But mostly you just kept looking at these really large expanses of flowers. And, um, and then at the end of the piece, everyone got to bring, you know, take home a pot of flowers uh, with them uh, on the, and it was only open for a couple of days. Anyway, uh, that's a really good example of a very kind of open process approach to art. And um, I thought it was a good piece to end on. All right, thank you very much.